Hello guys, welcome to a new tutorial. Um, this is Salt from Salt and Pepper. And today I'm going to show you how to skin a scarf. I was asked um, to show this and I was sent this model by a friend. So we will try this one. Um, this scarf I mo uh, modified a little bit to fit the body here. The body I'm using is the Freya, the Beleza Freya kit. And um, the scarf was modeled on a T pose, so I adjusted it a little bit already um, for it to fit the A pose. It's unrigged right now, and uh, we're going to skin this. Now, the issue we have, if you look from the side, this fluff ball here later will cause issues if we are going to copy the weights directly to the scarf. So we need a base shape, a single layer, because we also do not want to have this double layer up here and we want the weights to smoothly transfer, which is better from a single shape that is similar to the scarf what we have here. So we're going to block out a shape with quad draw and life object. I will hide the skeleton and I created a layer for the scarf that I will hide here too. Um, the approximate shape we know, I will activate symmetry, click the body and set it to live object. I cannot select it right now because it's set to live. In my tool palette, I'm going to select quad draw. And with the quad draw tool, I can click directly on the body to draw there. With symmetry activated, I'm going to block out a very basic shape. If you have four vertices with holding shift, you can connect them and it will snap the vertices directly to the body. And we're just going to block a very basic shape here. differently than I want to. I'm going to delete this one. Oh, it has another vertex in it, sorry. Okay, and this way we'll slide and just clip them together. Very basic. Now, when you hover over and hold control, it will show you lines where you just click and drops them and snaps them to your live object. This is how I block also basic shapes for any clothing I start with when it's skin tight. This is something you have very much control over your topology. Okay, this looks good. Now we're going to deactivate symmetry because we need only on this part, actually, to make it easier like this. Um, we had a little piece of scarf going down there and for this we're just going to add a little bit of geometry here like so okay now we can Deactivate the live object, go back to our regular object mode. Don't forget to save in between. And it's flickering because the mesh is laying um, directly on the body. So when we switch off the body, you can see the mesh. I'm going to clear history, smooth it, and the last edge I'm going to extrude 
to have a little bit more length. Just straight down because the scarf was approximately here. Let's see where it was. Oh, it's even too far. We don't want any effect, anything affect lower than this fluff ball. So maybe this edge here is not even needed. Delete the vertices that we don't need. The edge we keep. Okay, so this looks like a good base to skin from. We hide the scarf again. So we skin this base first, which means, well, to see it a little bit better, I'm going to just make it a tad wider so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, like this. You go to your rigging menu, shift select the pelvic bone of the skeleton, use interactive bind. Let me show you the settings I use for the interactive bind, the joint hierarchy and the closest distance here, classic linear and max influence is four. I already did that, so I just close this. Now we're going to copy the weights from the body to the mesh we created. Settings for copy skin weights, also closest point on surface, copy, and the base here is already done. Now we can check and see the movement. This moves already nicely. And uh, usually in this area, neck and chest has to be smooth a little bit more for it to work nicely. So right click and we go into our paint uh, weight tools and we take a look at the chest. We're going to smooth this area a little bit. It's not that much. We might have to smooth a little bit later on the scarf, but, and the neck, neck looks actually quite good. And, and neck. That's fine. So this is our basic rig layer, so to speak. Now we activate the scarf again and we'll use the scarf and bind this to the skeleton. Interactive bind. Uh, I think it was selected already. Now, yep, interactive bind. But now we don't copy the weights from the body, but we use the base shape we created right here. We select this first, shift select the scarf, and copy the weights with the same settings. But what you will see now, if we are looking especially at the chest weights, it took all the same weights from the last vertices we had here from the last row and used exactly the same weights for the whole fluff ball. This way it will move with the chest and won't get distorted um, from different weights coming from belly or anywhere in the belly area. But we already see that the gradient of some weights here is very um, edged. This is something we do not want. So in this area, we will have to smooth already. Otherwise, it's not going to look nice later on the upload. Because I don't really see what's going on inside here and we cannot only smooth from one side, I will select the vertices covering each other in this case. To select vertices, you need to um, hide the skeleton so you can select them. I have a pre-selection here already set. This is the vertices you would want. I show you how they look in the X-ray mode. And now we go to our paint tool. 
with the vertices selected, no others will be affected if I change anything in the weights now. So I can use the flood tool to only affect the vertices that I have selected. We're going to, going to go to the chest weight that is activated now. I'm just going to smooth a little bit here. Then we will have the pec weight that we will smooth a little bit. And probably neck. No, neck is fine here. Let's see the arms, clavicle, shoulder looks good. Yeah, here is also very, very edged on the upper arm. We will flood this a little bit too. Not too much. And now we deselect, go back to our vertex mode. Deselect vertices, go to paint mode. Now everything is affected, which I want because we want to manually go back to the chest weights. And this area here, we want to smooth. As this is a thick scarf, it won't affect really much the lower layer here. So this is an area we want to smooth a little bit. And I will hit flood only once to affect the whole scarf. So the bits that go underneath will be smooth a little bit as well to avoid clipping here. But I'll press it only once. That's smooth enough. Then we will check the neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we will flood again for the whole thing, uh, even twice. And then manually a little bit in this area. Okay. Let's check shoulders. We don't want two hard edges on something like this. This looks actually good to me. So now we can export this, select the mesh and uh, go to file, export selection. And we export this, I'm going to call this scarf Freya and export. I'm going to upload this to Second Life and I'll meet you there. Okay, so we're here now in Second Life and I'm going to upload the scarf now. I'm going to call it Scarf Freya so we know what it is. We set the lowest LOG to zero. In the upload options, we're going to check include skin weights calculate. Best to test things like that on better grid so you don't pay for the uploads. And add. I'm sorry for the non-matching skin tones. This is just my test body so I can see what's actually happening. This looks actually pretty good. I'm going to tint it a little bit. I don't have a texture for this so I'm tinting it just in a light gray to see a little bit better. You would want to test with the local texture to see how the shadows and everything work, uh, if the UVs work and everything. But for the rig itself, this already looks pretty good. She moves nicely with it. Let's see what happens if we change the boob sliders 
your seed moves up. No jagged edges. It's smooth here. Now you see it comes in here a little bit. This depends on the AO you have because in this AO, the shoulders actually turn a lot of inwards and when they turn inwards, the mesh will move accordingly. So with small pieces like this, it's always, you know, sometimes it's good to have them even in a non-rigged version so they stay fixed and sometimes it's nice to have it rigged. So it's it's up to you what you prefer better, but not every scarf or, or everything, especially jewelry that is around this chest needs to be rigged at all. Sometimes it actually looks even better if it's not rigged than if you can move it around. But this is quite nice, I think, to have it rigged. So this is what you would do. I'm not going to save this. And um, I hope this helped a little bit. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section, subscribe to the channel. And if you have anything, a question how to make something for Second Life, especially with Maya, um, leave it in the comments for me and I will try to get another tutorial done with it. Thank you for watching.